What is up guys, The Strong Boys 19 here. Today I'm going to be doing a new album review on a new 2020 released studio album. Now I had reviewed Trivium's latest album in terms of that type of form of reviewing albums. And for new albums to be released this year, we have quite a good selection. And for this one in particular, I am really anticipated to talk about the latest studio album by one of my top biggest inspirations of all time in music history by Robert Alan Zimmerman, aka Bob Dylan, entitled Rough and Rowdy Ways. Rough and Rowdy Ways is Dylan's 39th studio album, and to really think that his career spawned at more than 50 years and to have his first album made to almost reach its 60th anniversary. His reputation still grows passionate and even more of a big revolution of an artist to grow more of the collection of records that has been quintessential and influential growing from different genres on his protest era from freewheeling to times they are changing to swifting into the blues sound on the classic electric period from Bring It All Back Home to Blonde on Blonde and to many different stories on concepts to fictional characters and personal experiences. Other stunning albums from Blood on the Tracks, Basement Tapes, one of my other favourites being Desire and Love and Theft. Dylan's catalogue is still relevant and immensely important in music history. For Rough and Rowdy Ways to see that this is Dylan's latest studio album of original stuff for the first time in eight years since 2012's Tempest, I am really, really looking forward to say my personal experiences about this particular album. The previous three albums Dylan had released have been Frank Sinatra slash traditional pop style covers albums and I had reviewed Shadows of the Night when that came out and to think that Rough and Rowdy Ways is another new form of expression and a stylistic direction that Dylan wanted to participate in his later career and to celebrate his 79th birthday a month ago it's still crazy that he's still going strong as a big important artist in music. I'm going to go into this album track by track and for my purpose of this review I will have to say that Dylan's lyricism is basically a big journey on his own experiences, explores many different things. It's just an album that you can interpret his lyrics on how you would like to interpret them. So with that being said Let's go into the songs. The first song being I Contain Multitudes, which I had already talked about previously from my first reaction to the song. It opens with the sweet and gentle sound. And it's kind of like the similarity tone to the traditional sound that he had done previously. Dylan's voice on this one sounds warm and gets a lovely range of chords that follow each other, explores his lyrics with his experiences throughout his time and describes and compares himself like various kinds of people and makes references to William Blake, to the Rolling Stones and Beethoven. It is a very mellow start and the title of the song was taken after a poem called Song for Myself by Walt Whitman. So to really think that I Contain Multitudes opens the album in something like this kind of sound, like a number from his covers albums, you would think that Dylan is still continuing that kind of path, but then the later tracks go into different sounds and I feel really good to reflect myself into the eras of one of my favourite career eras of all time from any solo artist being the classic Electric Trilogy. And speaking of that, it goes into the next song called False Prophet, which is a raw 3-4 time signature blues style song 
It's something like a number from Blonde on Blonde in a way, with brief saxophones and clean rock and roll style lead guitar work. The music to this song was based from the title from Billy the Kid Emerson on the piece called If Loving Is Believing. I really like how Dylan explores his lyrics and to go into his own characteristic approaches in the way he delivers this kind of tone of these lyrics while this blues sound continues on. The next song, My Own Version of You, again, like I Contain Multitudes, so focused on its soft sound with exquisite tones of the pedal steel guitar and the tip-tap rhythms on the drums and the chords ascending from the very nice sound of Dylan's backing band of musicians, who I would give a lot of respect and credit for as they have their own sound and feel. Lyrics focus on what he sees from the different kinds of people and makes various pieces of them, putting them all together and make a different kind of person to life, a different kind of personality from somebody else or even a version of himself in his own mind. It is pretty strange and quite complex for Dylan to go into this kind of text of lyricism. While Dylan goes through a lot of references from Frank Sinatra to William Shakespeare, the Bible's book of Revelation, the Trojan women poem, and from Al Pacino to Marlon Brando. I've made up my mind to give myself to you. It's a ballad with a very similar touching feel of the ballad of Sad-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands, again from the Blonde on Blonde record. Dylan goes into a bit of a higher range on his vocals with emotion and flourishes with the lovely backing harmonies backing Dylan, while the sound grows more onto its moody sound, but it's filled with beauty and some touching expressions. It does feel different on something like on a different love song Dylan had done previously, but this one is absolutely beautiful from the way it was executed. In terms of something more on a darker approach of this kind of tone to the album, Black Rider presents that with a deeper form on expression, a fictional character with a mysterious description as Dylan describes this type of character. And it is made that is like on the Desire album era. It selects this kind of sound to a lower feeling of mood and presentation and it delivers that throughout the entire piece of the song. And this one does grow some more of that later on. Goodbye Jimmy Reed. This is to me like part two of Blonde on Blonde's classic leopard skin pillbox hat. It has punch with the raw sound on the guitars and the harmonicas briefly popping in and out. Again, with these references onto Jimmy Reed. And what brings a smile to my face on one of the lyrics is to point in a reference to one lyric from Captain Beefheart's track, Moonlight on Vermont, which is something that I did not experience before until I played the song again. And that is just a big part that I do love hearing during this great track, being one of my favourites on this album. Mother of Muses, again, this is another ballad with some stellar performances, again, from the soft flowing of the acoustic chords while Dylan sings some more onto the melody and grows its beauty from the soft tinges on folk styles that reminds me on like a Blood on the Tracks era, grows with Despair, which is another song that is one of the highlights with striking poetry and the delivery itself was gorgeous at the same time. Crossing the Rubicon. Now, this is a song that grows back to the 50s type of inspired blues style with the great production. The production as well, done by Dylan himself, is absolutely brilliant. The great driving deliveries of slick musicianship. While Dylan explores another darker and meaner kind of lyricism about the bad things around him, references of Julius Caesar, and to cross all of the bad things off, 
are crossing the Rubicon at the end of these lyrical verses. Key West, now this is possibly my least favourite song on the record, but with that being said, does contain calm backing vocals, which is a top-notch quality of this kind of sound, with the long droning style of instrumentation and the adorable, beautiful sound of the accordion while Dylan's story expresses into some more onto the darker and bleaker progressive touches onto the story that he is expressing. This is another song that makes references to people like Jack Kerouac being another one of Dylan's biggest influences in terms of his interest in poetry. I do like the instrumentation, but I do not think that this one is as strong as one of the previous songs, though I still think it is just a good song, without a doubt, at close to 10 minutes in length. And to credit Fiona Apple doing one of the contributions of backing vocals, as that she's been one of the most acclaimed musicians of recent times. So that is a good part. But we cannot finish this review off without talking about, again, Murder Most Foul, the longest Dylan track since Highlands from Time Out of Mind. The more I think about a song like this, the more I play it, I do find things quite difficult for me to give you guys a proper, full explanation of something like this. But I will say that with my feelings about this song, this is definitely one of the most powerful, intense, and emotional aspects of putting in such a deeper, meaningful part of one of America's tragedies into this kind of music. About the references on the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and to bring in some more of the cultural impacts, references of the 1960s, with references to the jazz scene, to the Beatles, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, to Stan Getz, Marilyn Monroe, the Everly Brothers, etc. This is, for me, like one of the most historical forms of music that Dylan had put onto tape. The long, really meandering, but beautifully soft, touching piano playing and droning violins to like an almost unstructured, very loose feel of this kind of sound. This is why Dylan won the Nobel Prize for Literature, not just because of this song, but to make music in such a big, reflective, and a huge statement that he has become many different things, like the voice of a generation, from him being a protest activist icon, to many different ways of lyricism on many of his albums, and to think that Dylan can still pull this off immensely as well as his career has spanned for more than 50 years, it's still outstanding that Dylan is definitely a triumphant lyricist to this day, and Murder Most Foul is a testament, it is a historical form of emotional and growing into a deeper side of music the more people would listen to this. And for this song being one of the standouts on this album, it is definitely a song that we need to think about more to reflect on this kind of scenario. And I do not blame anyone that does feel very emotional and really distraught about this experience because of their own views and their expressions about this kind of story. But I can tell you this, that Murder Most Foul, being the first Dylan song of original song to be released in close to a decade, this was well worth the growth and the anticipation for this part of this album. A lot of the lyrics to this album are humorous in places, but they do have their own growing 
passages of stories to some more of the heavier side of life, of mortality. But I think with this kind of feeling of this album, I think this is where Dylan just explores everything on whatever he sees and whoever he likes to express and compare to on any kind of album. I would like to see what your thoughts are about this record in the comments below as that I have seen some really good reviews and feedback on personal experiences from different people about this album. I'm going to give Rough and Rowdy Ways by Bob Dylan a 9 out of 10 and while it may not be one of my top 10 favourites, it is pretty close, but I can assure you that this may be, for me, his best album since Love and Theft, which is an album that's almost 20 years old, and that album being one of my favourite Dylan albums. So, that's really all I would like to say about this album. To anybody that doesn't know Dylan, if they have not heard of Bob Dylan whatsoever, I would definitely recommend some of his acclaimed albums that a lot of people have raved and talked about to many different opinions and pieces, why Bob Dylan is still a big cultural icon of music. Thank you guys for watching and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.